So I would say that uh, the way I look at this, at the end of the Cold War, something fundamental shifted in the United States. And I would say probably happened elsewhere around the world. But in the United States, the end of the Cold War did a couple of different things. First of all, it took the focus off of what we would call great power competition, or today something more akin to saying peer competition. And we started focusing on other things up to and including, of course, after 9-11, counterterrorism and counterinsurgency, mostly in the Middle East, but some other places around the country. So what happened when the Cold War ended is the government stopped paying attention to the emerging and disruptive technology industry that was blooming in Silicon Valley. And I use Silicon Valley because that's really where it started, but it's also uh, useful to just use that to say other places across the country where we saw these emerging technologies develop. And these commercial tech companies benefited. This is not, I'm not saying this as, as a pejorative or a negative sense. They benefited immensely from not having intrusive government oversight, regulations, even interest in what they were doing. So that allowed 30 years of technology innovation to just bloom in Silicon Valley to the point where, you know, to bring us into about 2016, where this begins to develop in, into the things we're going to talk more about in Project Maven in the Joint AI Center, is the government just was missing the commercial technology revolution. The defense primes, the famous defense primes, we're still very uh, embedded with, with the Department of Defense building satellites aircraft carriers, fighter aircraft, submarines, all the things that they're very well known for. But something else was happening that was a direct outgrowth of the personal computer revolution in the 1970s and early 1980s, and that is this thing called artificial intelligence. That has come and go, as you know very well, we've gone to AI summers and AI winters, but something was really happening as they started to find all the different components of what we now call the AI stack, mostly parallel computing, mostly new, you know, lots and lots of data, but also just getting better algorithms and better models that could rely on more data and better computing power. And they did this in the, you know, sort of in isolation from the government. That's the good part of this. I don't, I don't think all of this would have played out the way it did without having the government sort of off their backs. The danger of that, and the very real risk of that, is we ended up with a form of what I would call technological determinism, where people and the companies in Silicon Valley were developing technologies that they thought were best for the commercial consumer. They weren't they weren't getting business with the Department of Defense. They weren't profitable with the Department of Defense. Their big money, massive amounts, some incredible amounts of, of money one, were coming from the capital side and venture capital funding, but also the commercial consumer. So they focused on what, could they, what was best for the commercial consumer, which was really what the technology companies thought would be best for the commercial consumer. And the government was disconnected from all this. Yeah. Um, and what happened is within, I'd say just, let's say within the last seven, eight, 10 years, all of a sudden we entered a new world. We were no longer just focused on counterterrorism, counterinsurgency. We were into a peer competition. We had everything from China starting to do things that really started to alarm the, the, every administration in the United States, neither Democrat nor Republican only. It was both of them. But also the Ukraine conflict, uh, Russia invading Ukraine, all these other things started happening that made it clear those other what I would call halcyon days of uh, end of the Cold War were over. And they were over very quickly. But the problem was the government was not in a position to adopt those commercial technologies for its own purposes. And it's not just the Department of Defense. I would say the Intel community, all the departments of agencies suddenly realized there was something happening in the commercial world that was going to be um, so significant it would play into global geopolitics and geoeconomics. And, and the last thing I'll say about this, you know, the way I've portrayed this, again, it's a little bit too simple for some people's liking, I'm sure. But for 30 years, there was a technology cart that was racing ahead of the twin horses of geopolitics and geoeconomics. In the past, industrial policy always meant that those twin horses were pulling the technology cart along, but it was the opposite for 30 years. So now we're trying to figure out how does the government get back in front of the technology cart, not to stifle uh, uh, innovation, which nobody wants to have happen, but also to understand these two words that got out of favor in this country for over 30 years, 
industrial policy. China has a clear, clear, clear industrial policy. I'm sure we'll talk more about that. <laughs> the United States didn't have one when it comes to these technologies, so we had to do a lot of work, and it's slow work, and it's, it's been eight years in the making since Project Maven to reverse that tide and all of a sudden start bridging. And the industrial policy means how do you connect your national strategic end state it's a technology end state, it's an economic end state, it's a military power end state. It's what's best for the country to the ways and means of emerging and disruptive technology. Not just the technology themselves, but how you use those technologies to help bridge the gap between the means, the ways, and the strategic end states. That is what has been somewhat painful for the United States government to work its way through just over the past you know, seven, eight years. So there's my, my attempt to summarize in a few minutes what I think has played out over the past you know, 30 years or so.